Well, that not, might not sound like a big deal, but let me tell you, I'd been in a town of 2,000 people for 12 years, and uh, in 1940, we moved to Little Rock, and I saw my first streetcar. Uh, they had uh, big movie theaters, and you know, this was, it was a city, capital city, but it was a city of about 100,000 people, but to me, that was New York City. I mean, we had all these big modern conveniences and a lot of entertainment uh, priorities. And uh, anyway, my dad got a real good job with Alcoa, and we moved to, to Little Rock. And my life changed radically. We not only had a, a better place to live, but we had a better school system, a really good school system. And uh, uh, I was doing pretty good in my in schoolwork all the way through elementary school and junior high school, and finally went to my first uh, meeting at our high school in Little Rock, which later on became very famous for other things. But uh, they had an announcement on the PA system about the second or third day I was there. They wanted all, the, all boys uh, to go to the main auditorium at 1 o'clock after lunch for a special presentation. And so, you know, well, I went. A couple of my buddies went with me. And we got sat down, and our principal came on with the microphone. He said, uh, as you all know, uh, we're going to be heavily involved in the war in Europe and probably in the Pacific. And I have a special presentation for you here today, and I want you all to pay attention because you might be interested. And uh, so he introduced these three fellows who came out in khakis, khaki uniform and a military cap. And he introduced this one fellow. Uh, and he said, my name is uh, Colonel Rex Ryan. And he says, I'm the uh, commanding officer of the uh, Arkansas wing of the Civil Air Patrol. And we didn't even know what that was. So he said, we're, all mili we're, we're former military people, but we also have a lot of volunteers from the civilian life, and we're getting ready to start a brand new program called the Civil Air Patrol Cadets, and we need young boys your age, young men. And cadets, boy, that and airplanes, I knew right away that was going to involve airplanes. So uh, I think there were five of us who stayed after the presentation, and we became the initial contingent of the cadet program in uh, Arkansas, right there at our local airport. And uh, that was the beginning, of the really beginning for me. I never lost my interest in aviation. Uh, and I would ride my bike down to the airport any chance I got a time I got a chance. But this was going to be real activity of some kind. And so uh, this fellow took our uh, name, rank, and serial number or whatever, you know, and arranged for us to come on a particular night to this particular building at the airport to get our orientation to see if we really wanted to become part of the Civil Air Patrol cadets. And all five of us went, and all five of us signed up, and I stayed in that uh, all through the war. And uh, we didn't quite understand what this was all about because we're not going to have German bombers over Little Rock, you know. It was pretty obvious. They didn't have anything they could do with that. Or Japanese submarines up the Arkansas River. It just wasn't going to happen. But what they were concerned about was the Arkansas River <clears throat> came through Tulsa, Oklahoma, and it went right past a gigantic... Uh, aircraft plant owned by Douglas, Douglas Corporation, and they were building uh, 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 different kinds of airplanes, uh, bombers and transport planes, and uh, then they would put them on barges and take them down the Arkansas River all the way to the Mississippi River, which ultimately went to New Orleans, and they would put them on ships and send them wherever they needed them around the world. And uh, they were seriously concerned about the locks and dams on the Arkansas River because it was a very silty river. And if they didn't contain the silt, 
in those locks and dams, they could actually block the locks and dams from working properly, and that would have shut down that very inexpensive way of getting the airplanes from Tulsa to New Orleans. Well, that all made sense. And that was the reason for forming the Cadet Corps there, because they wanted us to fly with the senior members. And uh, we would go up and down the Arkansas River uh, uh, in a Piper Cub or a Taylor Craft or something like that. And the Cadet would always sit in the front seat and have uh, binoculars, and the senior member would ride in the back and fly the airplane. And we'd be watching to see where the saboteurs were and see if there was anything wrong in the river. Of course, nothing like that ever happened. But they were seriously concerned about some somebody going out there and uh, being the cause of those dams to lock, uh, to break. And uh, so we thought that was pretty important stuff, you know, to a kid our age. I was a sophomore in high school, so hey, that's that's pretty important. And I did that all through the war. And during every summer during the war, right up until 45, we would get to go to an Army Air Force base on an encampment for either one or two weeks. And, uh, you know, there was method to their madness there. They knew they were generating some enthusiasm there for people in military aviation. And it did. And uh, I loved it, man. That was the biggest thing in my life at that time, except for my girlfriend. But uh, anyway, uh, in 45, when, of course, the war ended, first in, uh, in May of 45 in, in Europe, and then in August in 45, and um, I got a point here I'm going to make, so hang with me. Uh, in August of 45, uh, in, in, um, in Japan, with the dropping of the two uh, atomic weapons, that uh, in 45 it was all over, but they still took us out to uh, to these uh, to I think it was Selman Air uh, Army Air Force Base uh, in uh, near uh, uh, some little town in in, in uh, Louisiana. But after that, you know, the war was over, and it looked like the the you know the cadet program wasn't really going to amount to very much after that, but. Had another invitation to come to the auditorium one day in school two years later when I was a senior in early 1946. It was the year I graduated from high school. And this time it was the Navy. It turns out that the uh, Army Air Corps, the, the, the Air Corps was not made into the Air Force until, uh, until 47, and they broke away from the Army. But the Army and the Navy were both under pressure to get uh, young people back interested in aviation because, and this is an odd angle, but the governors of the state wanted to have their National Guards rebuilt because all the National Guard military had been absorbed. The National Guard didn't exist anymore. And all uh, at that time it was 48 states, but the uh, the National Guards were just absorbed into uh, the military. So they decided they'd better do something about it. So they reenacted the programs, the two programs that they had during the war, and they were the aviation cadet programs. And uh, this guy was describing what we're going. We're going to give you a test today if you're interested. And those of you who do well in, in the test will either go to a, 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 a college or a university that has emphasis or some kind of a contract with the Army or the Navy because they want to get their, their uh, uh, pilot and navigator sources built back up to where they were before the war. Well, that sounded interesting, so I decided I'd give it a shot. And I took the test and passed it. And there were about, I don't know, maybe 15 of us in the class. Had to be senior boys. And uh, so I took it and passed it. They notified us that we were, those who passed it were going to go to either uh, 
uh, an Army airfield for further testing or to a Navy airfield. Uh, and then I decided that uh, I would try the Navy aspect of it just because I was interested in see what the two were like. And uh, they took us on a train, gave us train tickets, and took us down to New Orleans, 12th Navy District. And I took their tests and passed them and uh, was invited to go to school at Louisiana State University that, that fall. Uh, I think this probably had happened in June or so. And so I was assigned to LSU and went down there in September. Got my two years of academics in, which was required to continue in the program. However, the temptations in New Orleans were severe. And I didn't have the necessary GPA to stay in the program. However, the governors that I mentioned before of the, uh, the various states were even more interested in getting their aviation situation built up than the Navy was. And so uh, they offered us the opportunity to take another test to transfer to the, uh, avi to the uh, uh, brand new Air Force. Brand new Air Force was created uh, in, uh, in October of 47. And if I passed that test, then I could enter the aviation cadet program with the, with the Air Force. Well, it was kind of a mixed blessing. I really wanted to stay in the, once I was in the Navy for those two years, I was just a student. It wasn't like, you know, being in the military at all. I was going to school and get these two years of academics out of the way, which I did. And, uh, but the Air Force had a different concept. You were very definitely going to be in the military right away. But I got credit for two year, being two years in the military through this Naval Aviation Cadet Program. So it was a mixed blessing. So I, I did go to San Antonio and uh, took the, their State 9 test, which was the official designation, same as the Navy was, and I passed them. And I already had my two years of academics. So in uh, July, right after the 4th, the 5th or 6th of uh, 1948, I began my uh, training with the Air Force at Randolph Field, a very famous training base near San Antonio, Texas.